Hi all, uh, this is I guess take 11. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show you how to uh, set up the uh, uh, cam position sensor timing in relationship to the crank position sensor timing. Um, and uh, I guess some of the parts that you need to know and some information you need to know on how to do it. It's not very, very difficult. Um, I've, I guess I've made it easier with some of these parts here because uh, some of these parts here are available through neveronoughperformance.com. Um, uh, so one of the things you need is a, uh, this is called a CPS bushing. And uh, so that holds the uh, CPS in the right location. Um, so you can see one of the things here, this, this CPS, it came out of a, uh, a Jeep 2001, I think it was, Jeep six owner. You can see the tab on the end is just, just almost like the uh, 440 tab. A 440 distributor tab so it fits right in there it's just that this this uh, is about 400 thousandths longer than the uh, 440 distributor um, so you need and it's also you can see it's a smaller smaller diameter here so hence the uh, bushing so the bushing gives you that little bit extra height and it gives you the you know makes up the difference um, and then you need uh, so then I also have this uh, now you know I mean, uh, anyway, so I also have this hold down clamp here, and this just happens to be the right right diameter to hold the, to you know, go down on here. And it's also uh, 400 thousandths taller in this area here, and it's made out of stainless steel. So it's pretty nice, pretty nice part. So then you also need this uh, trigger wheel. Um, and the trigger wheel, this particular trigger wheel, is a uh, 36 minus 1 trigger wheel. Um, you got a missing tooth, missing tooth gap here. This would be tooth one. It's important to know. What tooth one's important to know about. Um, so this is made to uh, it, this this diameter here. It pilots on the front of the uh, damper, and uh, and then the uh, your front pulley bolts on over top of it and bolts through here. And uh, it runs very you know runs very true to the to the crank. Um, so uh, we also have this coil bracket that holds the. Uh, the LS1 coils in place. Um, okay, so um, so yeah. Um, also, we have all right. So what you need to do then is you need to uh, when you set your your CPS in there. Um, th this is the uh, flag for the sensor, the window for the sensor to sit down through, and then the flag. You can see this one here is actually 100 180 degrees. The the pr the previous video I put out, I. Had shorten this flag up a good bit and uh, so I wanted to put one in there and it looked like what you guys would pick up out of the junkyard or if you bought it new um, so what's important here then is the flag has to have passed through the the, the window here before you get to um, the missing tooth gap um, and that that what that's doing is it's telling the ECU what rotation of the motor the crank is on um, so if it, it shows up before the missing tooth gap the missing tooth gap it shows up before that and uh, so you're going to have cylinder cylinder one the valves are the, the valves are closed on cylinder one and uh, so you're coming up on the uh, so it the, the flag the flag passes through the through the window here before you know I, I'm at actually you can see I'm actually have already passed where I'm at setting right now. Um, come on, light, help me out here. You can see I've already, the missing tooth gap has already passed the sensor and I'm sitting in front of tooth one. Um, and the uh, flag, it's it's almost halfway through the, through the, through the gap here. All right. So that's kind of like your, main your you know your setup uh, is your setup and then once you set this up you never adjust the timing with this with the cps this is just a rough this is just a rough setting for, for the uh, ecu timing um so you'll never adjust the timing here again once you have this installed so you don't have to reach in there and you know whatever it's, it makes things makes life so much easier all right so then you have your you know your set up your missing tooth gap your to, your tooth one. So then the next thing that you need to know is on your uh, damper, uh, you have to have an aluminum damper with this setup. I'm using a hall sensor. The sensor itself is magnetic, uh, so it doesn't like a steel damper. 
um, because it, it needs to, it, that's what the trigger wheel does because of the teeth that turns the, turns the sensor all and off. And if the damper is sitting like right, you know, if the damper is sitting right, right behind it, the same diameter, it never sees the, uh, the wheel, the wheel turning on and off. So that's why you want to use a, uh, you want to use a, uh, aluminum damper, um, with this setup. All right. So once you have that, once you have that done, you're going to take that number. You can look on your damper and see where where it is to your timing mark. Uh, you know that the, the uh, your top dead center mark on the on the um, timing cover. Um, so mine is at like at 40, 44, 45 degrees, and that's really kind of what you want to have. It needs to your timing your tooth gap needs to show up before top dead center. Um, I, I think it says in the manual like forty degrees or more ahead of top dead center. So mine's showing up the tooth missing tooth gaps. I think it shows up at like 55 degrees and the tooth one shows up at 45 degrees. So then you're going to take that number um, that you see on the damper there and you're going to come over here to your uh, tuner studio. I'm using uh, tuner studio. Come on. There it is. Tuner studio. That's what I'm using. And um, so then you're going to go here to the ignition settings tab. And then you're going to look for this ignition options wheel decoder. And you're going to come down here to this setting here. Um, this one right here, you see it says 44 degrees there. So that's your tooth one angle. So this is this is based kind of like a rough, this number here adjusts the relationship of your engine to your timing table. Um, once you have this number set here correctly, then you're going to set your timing. You're going to always adjust your timing here with this ignition table one. Um, so whatever number you have here, so so say let's say you are uh, you know you're idling and you're maybe uh, you know maybe you're at 800 RPM. I don't know what kind of cam you're running, but I'm kind of running a little bit of an aggressive cam and it idles. I've got it idling about a thousand RPM. So um, so you might be running it maybe 60 kPa. Um, and uh, if you're running at 40 degrees, all right, so maybe you're running at 40 degrees, and uh, maybe you're running at 12 degrees or whatever you have it set up. But that's how I have my motor set up. Um, you know, it's, it, it might look like a strange number to you, but um, I kind of like the way it, it runs, it idles at that. And uh, we're just looking at the EGTs and so forth. It's kind of I'm just learning. I'm learning a lot of stuff, and I just put a EGT sensors on the on the engine, so I'm kind of fooling around with it, you know, from that standpoint, looking at uh, timing as opposed with the EGT. So that's why that number's in there, kind of weird looking. But whatever it is, uh, this number is. If it's if you have 12 in there, if you have 20, maybe you got six or seven, whatever it is, you're going to look over here. You're going to start your engine up. And you're gonna um, look at your timing mark, and if it says if it says you're if you have timing, maybe you have uh, 12 degrees in your table, and and it says here you're at 15, then you're gonna come over, come back over here to to your to this uh, to this uh, table here to your tooth one angle, and you're gonna adjust that number by three degrees to make your timing table look right so the timing table looks like what you're seeing on your engine once you have that set up then you're done you can adjust all your timing from the timing table so all the timing from then then on is timing table you don't ever have to get under the hood you can just look at that and make an adjustments um, all right so that's that's important and then one of the other things you want to do is even before you start your engine up you pull all your spark plugs out pull all the spark plugs out except for Cylinder one, leave cylinder one in, put your timing light on, put your timing light on there, uh, turn your turn your fuel off, and then uh, you can crank the engine over and you listen for the compression stroke coming up. You hear the compression stroke and you should see the flash of your timing light. And if you have it, if it shows up at the right time, you know your timing, your relationship between the CPS and the trigger wheel is set up correctly and then you can even look at your uh, timing and uh, when it's flashing you can see what that timing actually is and compare it to the table on the laptop and then uh, you know so then uh, there you go uh, let me see I don't know if I'm thinking uh, stop or think I'm gonna put you on pause for a second and see if I forgot anything oh yeah I have some other um, 
I have some other videos uh, that are posted here on YouTube um, talking about this uh, 440. Um, it's a rear mount turbo um, and uh, completely fuel injected, sequential fuel injection. And uh, so there's a few other videos there, and I intend to tend to post some others in the future. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in looking at them uh, or finding some more information about this, uh, you know, what we're doing here, um, you know, even if you want to contact us, uh, neveronoughperformance.com, and uh, you can find my, you know, contact information there. So, all right. So anyway, everybody, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, uh, have a good day. Bye.